you, Serge Ravi. Thank you so much for agreeing to meet up with me online well, this you. afternoon. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. No, I'm delighted. I'm delighted that we have this opportunity to get together and to um, discuss so many things because you're a very busy man and you've done a lot of things over past years. So on behalf of the Open Education Special Interest Group, um, which is supported by Alt, I wanted to make sure that we could have capture really a conversation around all these different domains that you've been working in and, and share it more widely with the Open um, community so that they are more aware of of what's going on mm -hmm. so um, obviously I'm personally I'm I'm the current chair of the open ed sig network and people probably know me best as um, at Warwick language on Twitter which is actually where I first came across your work on Twitter um, but Serge we we first met at an event which was organized by myself and a group of other ladies um, at the University of Southampton um, that was called Open Badges HE and it was an event where we wanted to bring together the learning around Open Badges and share it with the HE community and it happened back in 2016 and I was amongst many people who presented the work that we'd done with Open Badges but I sat and listened to your presentation and I found your take on micro-credentials as tools for rebuilding trust in education really interesting. It, was, um, it went really to the heart of the uh, discussions that have been happening for many years around um, how we can improve education and which bits if anything were if any bits were failing or needed change you pointed to a way of using badges to build community and individual agency for learners um, but four years on where are we with all this potentiality um, I'd love to know your take on that. Have we moved things forward? And, and if we have, or even if we haven't, do you see any risks perhaps in um, the adoption or failure to adopt open badges? Oh, that's many, many questions. <laughs> Sorry, yes. <laughs> yes, let's break them down. <laughs> uh, so, uh, do you feel we've made any progress? What I can say is I'm very happy to be in France now. <laughs> uh, in fact, I'm in Austria, I'm in, Wien, uh, in Vienna just, just now. Uh, but uh, uh, when we started to work on ePortfolio, that we organized the first international conference in 2003 in Poitiers, then we went to La Rochelle. And as we had more Portuguese participants than French, uh, we decided let's go to the UK because there were even more people from the UK uh, coming to uh, our conference. And so since then we have been abroad for uh, our ePortfolio conference and we have been all over the world to, to discuss ePortfolio and very little in France and until 2016 when we, we had a conference in Bologna and we decided to hack the Bologna a declaration to create a, a space for higher a European space for higher education and we created uh, the open recognition uh, declaration the Bologna open recognition declaration the board and it happened there were a very good delegation of French people coming there and so the we decided uh, it was in 2018 to go back to France and and there is something very particular happening in France now because uh, we are really working on recognition. But the thing we have understood is badges were designed to make informal learning visible, but we discovered that it was not just informal learning, it could be also informal recognition. And the problem we, 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 we had, uh, I saw with badges uh, very early on, was that we were using badges to do the old stuff. And, and the name itself, we call them micro-credentials. 
And so the, the mind frame with which people are thinking badges is kind of micro diploma, mini diploma. Uh, and so basically uh, you learn something and then you are being tested and then you will have a badge. Uh, the vocabulary used in badges, uh, you have criteria, evidence, but the evidence, if you think about evidence and criteria, who is it for? It's for the assessor. It's for the assessor to check if the evidence provided match uh, the criteria defined. So the whole vocabulary uh, that we have with, with badges is uh, conducive to a thinking which is extremely limited. Because if we, if we understand that what we are talking about is about recognition, then we should have a conversation about recognition, not about badges. You know, how, how do you create a badge? Uh, who cares? It's, 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 it, it, any moron can create a badge. That, that you need to use any intelligence to create a badge. Uh, on the other hand, if you think about recognition, you will never treat someone as a moron because you will start by recognizing the person as a knower. Uh, and it will be about unconditional recognition. You need to start with recognition. You need to start by recognizing the person. Uh, if you are a social worker, uh, you don't come with, with your uh, toolbox and say, oh, have the toolbox to help the person who has problems. Because the person who knows the solution is the person herself. Uh, and so th then, the, then if you think this way, if you think that the people are knowers, that people know the solution, that what you want to do is to empower the people and to empower means to be able to move, to move and and to have an impact or uh, an interaction with what is around you. The first thing about empowering is moving. And uh, I, I, I've seen badges that really disempowering. They are fixing people. And so the, uh, in terms of vocabulary, for example, now, uh, I don't say we should never use uh, competency badges with criteria and evidence. Uh, yes, we did that with before, but uh, so in terms of vocabulary, we, we prefer to use now in some of the context, uh, the idea of documentation, which is much more neutral. You want to document, and for example, you want to document a practice. The, the, the problem we have with competencies is uh, I've designed competency frameworks, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll do it again, but it is an analytical approach to things. It requires abstraction. Uh, if you want to, a practice is evidence. If you're a, a baker, you produce uh, a loaf of bread. Uh, so you can recognize a practice, you can recognize a baker. Can I recognize the competencies of a baker? Uh, do I need a competency framework uh, to, to become a baker? Uh, uh, when you look at MasterChef, is there a competency framework behind MasterChef? And, and uh, th that's absurd, okay? So the problem with, with competency and some of the badges, competency badges, they, they look individuals as um, a kind of set of attributes. This badge, this badge, this badge, this badge. Uh, you see things that are absolutely silly, like uh, a creativity badge. Can you imagine the paradox of having a badge which is about creativity, which is assessed in a non very creative way? <laughs> so you have the kind of a competency framework and the, and the criteria to prove that you are uh, creative, but no, you can be creative in one context and not in another one. And in fact, we should assess more the ability of a context of an organization to be conducive to creativity. <laughs> some context or some people can make you feel like an idiot. 
So, Yet again, Sal, you, you blow my mind whenever I listen to you talk. It's just amazing. But what you're pointing to very much is that we that, that tendency to kind of replace like with like, which is the easiest route, isn't it? You know, we understand how credentials work. So micro credentials will just re replace them and we'll just yep. go down that easy path. And what you're challenging us to do is to think more broadly about who we are as humans and how we behave and what we do and what we present so yeah. rather than re reducing us as you say to ticking boxes we think more creatively about the whole dynamic of our relationships with other human beings and how we how we create you made me think of a line came into my head from a book i read way back at university um Chien perdu sans collier when I was yeah. studying French, where there, there's a social worker saying to uh, another social worker, moi je connais le dossier, and the social worker says, but moi je connais l'enfant. And it points directly to that, you know, do you know the set of attributes this person has? No, but I know the person, I know what sort of person they are, I know what they can do. And also what you can, could add to that is, and the child knows herself. Yes, yes. Which is probably more important than, than, than the social worker knowing who the children is. Uh, exactly. The, the solution, the children know the solution. The person has a solution in her own hand. What, you, what is necessary is to create the condition for action, for moving, to put the person in, 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 into, uh, yes, into a, a movement. And, uh, and, and the beauty of is when you start the, 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 the problem with people who are disempowered, they think they can't move. So as soon as, as, you, as you create the condition for that movement, and that condition starts with recognition. It really does. Re it really does. It's a trigger to movement. Uh, we, uh, we, have, we have the, the uh, president d'honneur de notre association. Uh, reconnaître, uh, Claire Hébert Suffrain, uh, she was a teacher in the 70s uh, in the suburb of Paris. And uh, she had problems with her pupils who thought they were bad learners, they couldn't learn anything. So now imagine that you uh, raise a challenge to a trainer or a teacher, how would you deal with that? Uh, I know some of them would say, oh, I give them an exercise which is not too difficult or something to learn which is not too difficult and they will see that they can learn something yes but there is a bug here if they fail it's even worse <laughs> because they fail to, to do something which was supposed to be easy so it, you must be a complete idiot i give you something easy to learn and you're not able to learn you you, you, you. now wh what did claire hébert suffrain do with her pupils teach me something she recognized them as knowers. She recognized them as people who could teach her something. And what is the best way to make people believe that they can learn if they believe that they can teach? Uh, and I think this is the, the, the problem we have in education. We have been uh, conditioned to believe that recognition is something that comes at the end. You learn, you pass exam, and then you have your diploma, you have your recognition. And the macro credentials are designed exactly like that for 99.99%. Now, if you think that recognition is something that starts at the beginning, that the recognition is not to align with some kind of a framework of the social worker or the teacher, but that the, the, it is within the person herself. That, that what you want is to recognize a person or the person to recognize herself, to, to develop uh, self-esteem. Uh, what do you do for that? You don't have a tool. The tool is the person. So, I mean, it's so much aligned with the, the sort of refocusing on hurtagogy as an approach um, yes. and, and empowering learners to become masters of their own destiny. Um, and and very a lot of what you say resonates with me in terms of the conceptualization of assessment as a means of sorting the sheep from the goats 
yeah. yeah so based around the wrong paradigm so rather than sorting people out surely we need to bring more people up and discover the potentiality of those people who are who are waiting do you think we're anywhere nearer um, arriving at that point do you think there are things that we can do positively to help arrive at that point this is what i see this is why i'm very excited with with what's happening in france now where uh, people speak about reconnaissance ouverte open recognition which was a term we 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 really uh coined uh in uh, 2016 uh, we coined that term and now it is being used like yeah, on fait de la reconnaissance ouverte. <laughs> uh, uh, and and this is this is absolutely this is very exciting time to see how uh, we created Reconnaître, and then there are uh, regional collectives that are being created, and then uh, local collectives that are created around open recognition. The idea that it is really about um, recognizing the people, giving them the power to recognize. Uh, because the problem is, uh, it's always the idea of recognition is, I want to be recognized. But if you think in terms of emancipation, you can't emancipate yourself if you don't emancipate the others. It, 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 it is all together or not. Uh, and so the ability to recognize, uh, to recognize that we can recognize <laughs> uh, and, to, and so to this emphasis we put on informal recognition as, as the value of informal recognition, because think a second, maybe a diploma has been formally recognized but the recognition of a diploma in the real world is informal. Yes, it's reputation, it's informal. You can force people to accept a diploma, maybe except if it is for uh, special jobs uh, where uh, it gives some, some kind of privilege when you have some, some diploma. So I think the, the, the real uh, idea is, is about recognition and, and to think, for example, if we think about badges, uh, we used to, uh, to have a, ca a canvas to design badges. But the problem we discovered with that is that it focused on the badge and not on the ecosystem. And so what we are doing lately is to think uh, uh, badges as kind of um, byproduct of a discovery pathway. And so you, you are the discoverer, you are exploring. As an explorer, you create artifacts. And the metaphor we use is that of a cairn. Uh, you know the cairn? Uh, the, the, the stones you put uh, on? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and, and I think this is the metaphor we would like to use for badges. Is to say, because when we create badges today, we think in terms of what for employment, what would be the badges that employers would like to see? And I think this is a very bad approach. I don't say we shouldn't use it, but basically it's like, okay, make a CV and put badges instead of what you have. Uh, very, very poor idea, very uncreative. What you should think is about badges that are like, that basically the person create badges, not for an employer in five years time, if you're a student, but for the people will be on the same path just behind you. So basically you are, you are uh, mapping the territory. So as a person, you map the territory and, and you create your own badge if you want, and, and you take that badge and put it on a pile, and, and then you are contributing to mapping the territory. And this badge would, could be used by someone else uh, to say, uh, okay, th this is an interesting path. Maybe I should go. I should go this way, and and so the idea of the person as being the producer of these stones that you put on uh, on a cairn, uh, uh, and that to produce something that has immediate value, hence the idea of documentation. Because if you produce documentation, this documentation can be used by other people. But because if you use, if you just produce evidence that will be used or valuable only for the assessor. Uh, 
And the thing in, we have a, a, a verb in French. In French, uh, we we use évaluer. Évaluer literally means giving value to something. Uh, and this is what really should, evaluation should be about. It should be giving value to people and not sorting the good from the bad. Yes, I, I think there's, there are a lot of interesting, in fact, the linguistic things as well that I'm, that I'm picking up from this because thinking about the term documentation to me as a native English speaker brings bring some fairly horrendous sort of images to mind. It's about having uh, the right documents to pass, um, you know, being allowed in with certain documents and not with others. And, and this whole idea of, um, and it's very, it's very different having lived and worked in the French context. I understand the sort of importance of documentation in that context. And in the English context, it's, there's a lot of pushback around that sort of, um, approach to having the right paperwork um oh yeah yeah but what would you use instead of evidence the idea is what yeah. you use documentation what time would you use I, well i i mean i i totally get the um the metaphor and the cairns metaphor particularly with mapping the territory and i love this sort of idea of capturing your journey as you go along which has very much been behind my implementation of e-portfolios in language study to uh, you know give students ways of discovering and reflecting on their own persona as a language learner and creating that persona and adding to it i think that's really really powerful i i just i worry a little bit about the word documentation or documents mm -hmm. purely for that kind of legalistic um, interpretation that you see and you know, you think to the sort of having the right papers on you at the right moment and this sort of thing that we saw in the Second World War that kind of those kind of images sort of attached mm -hmm. to it but but I love the fact that actually you know through e-portfolio use or particularly sort of ownership of your pathway and collecting badges and and the idea of having your badges as a sort of breadcrumb trail that others can see so you can show where you've been yeah. um, it's very powerful and it also doesn't have that kind of limiting effect of um uh you know these are the criteria we expect you to meet which yes. is, which is very deterministic it's it's very it, it's to me it's totally the wrong mindset of encouraging people to grow um, yeah. which would be much more helpful um, so you know encouraging uh, different responses to those that you expected there's a wonderful mm -hmm. talk by Ken Robinson that no doubt you've come across where he talks mm -hmm. about you know what happens when you ask a child to draw a house um, you know it's the, the nature of assessment and evaluation that is um, very often based upon the idea that we are the experts and and those people going through those processes have nothing to bring to the story and one of the most powerful things i found in virtual exchange about using digital badges was that it actually encouraged staff and students to discuss together what is the value where is the extra value of what we're doing um, let's capture it let's badge it you know were you a particularly um, uh, constructive partner in the in the team as you were collaborating uh, and the, these sort of ideas then come out and I think that sort of bottom-up creativity as well encourages change it, it encourages us as practitioners to look again at our practices uh, and, and re-evaluate what we need to do in our role um, in terms of valuing the students input um, also what, what is interesting uh, with, with with this kind of technology and the practices we can develop around is um, the collective dimension uh, when we organize portfolio conferences I, I tried to have people speak about uh, collective portfolio and uh, was almost nobody did it uh, except for Darren Cambridge but a beautiful presentation at one of our conferences. But apart from that, it was always me, 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 me. Uh, and 
uh, I had a conversation with a colleague in, in, in France, uh, Philippe Didier Gauthier, who wrote a book about the portfolio. Uh, he, he studied uh, portfolio and uh, transition professionnel. And uh, when I mentioned this collective dimension and the ability for one person to recognize others, okay, he said, oh, that's interesting you said that because uh, I've analyzed a number of portfolio and the one I liked, uh, I, I thought was the most interesting was the portfolio of the person who was telling the story of others. And uh, this is not something natural with any portfolio, but this is something which could be very natural with badges. Uh, because uh, uh, the, the thing is, there was always this conversation, this discussion about collective portfolio, whether should the collective portfolio be at the aggregation of individual portfolio or the individual portfolio, the projection into an individual plane of a collective portfolio. Was never solved that, that uh, question. But the beauty with badges, it is both. Because all the people who share the same badge are part of a community. And, and if one badge uh, shared by a community is endorsed, it has a positive impact on all the community. So the distinction between individual and community kind of blur uh, thanks to, 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 to badges. Uh, and the collective dimension is still undervalued uh, with badges because it is my passport, my backpack. Uh, and what we try to do is to, to uh, we're working on tools now to make it much more uh, avert this uh, collective dimension of recognition. Uh, because what is important is not that you have a badge, because who cares? But it's much more interesting if you are able to say, ah, there are a thousand people with the same badge. And this badge has received uh, one million, collectively one million endorsements. And the people who have the same badge have been employed here, here, and here. At the end, the badge is just a connector. The value, you know, when people say, oh, how can you create a badge that has value? Uh, and if you torture yourself to designing a badge which has a lot of value, you're lost. It's much better to say, let's design a badge that has no value at all. Okay? It doesn't matter if you have it, if you don't have it. Okay? Because the value of the badge will be defined by its usage. So don't try to build something that has value. Try, try to build something that will be able to collect value, that make things visible, and then that will, the value will come from the recognition. Uh, yes, yes, we've really seen that in, in the use of open badges uh, in the uh, virtual exchange initiative. Yes. Uh, you know, we've had literally thousands of people collecting badges and, and through using Open Badge Passport, we've been able then to use those as connectors and, and recognize expertise. And, and as you say, you build the trust really within your community of practice. You start to recognize each other. I've even seen it sort of working in a small way on Twitter in that, you know, you you yeah. very quickly recognize the people who um you know share the things that are interesting and useful to you and you kind of they build a network you build a network of trust around those things and and i do think e-portfolios have that um potentiality but but i'm most interested in this idea of open recognition i'm terribly excited that it's really um getting uh, hold in in france because i think that's a huge challenge and it's really good to to know that it that that is having an effect um having okay. having taught and worked in the education sector in in france i know that the you know that it's it's not easy to be valued and i i taught in a lycée technique where many of the students i worked with clearly didn't feel valued and and you think well if you feel like that at 16 17 18 how do you ever become a valuable contributor to your society and how are you enabled to enact change in your society mm -hmm. so i think it's that that is great news and we have the same the same phenomenon in the uk in fact if anything it's been uh, it's been made worse over the last 10 years or so with an increased sort of um, uh, competitive 
push uh, that everybody must uh, outstrip everybody else, where in fact we really need to be finding people's talents. And um, doing that in an open way is really, really exciting. So I want to come to the, the two organisations that you have been very instrumental in, in developing, and, and those are MIRVA and the Open Recognition Alliance. Um, and, and their role in open recognition. How, how do you feel these organisations can play a role in opening up learning and, and personal development uh, for the 21st and the 22nd century, assuming um, that, we, that, that we as a human race survive global pandemics? We have huge challenges ahead, don't we? So there is an urgency um, that we we actually achieve people's human potential as quickly as possible and and perhaps if you can tell us a little bit about those organizations MIRVA and and ORA. Well, MIRVA was a European project uh, that right. led to the creation of uh, Reconnaître. But in fact the Open Recognition Alliance started in 2016 in, in Bologna uh, which is, it's an informal uh, organization Okay, there is no uh, values or anything. It's people who find themselves uh, uh, like the ID and support of the ID. And then we created MIRVA, which stands for Making Informal Recognition Visible and Actionable. Uh, that led to the creation of uh, Reconnaître, uh, Open Recognition Alliance, a full name. Uh, and the thing, what, what, what we saw is that because we created this association uh, in, uh, with also a project that had emerged called uh, Badgeon la Normandie, the idea is to badge a territory. I had the idea of a portfolio for a region, but never uh, took hold. So and what we have seen is that by creating a space where people can really think about recognition, we have been able to bring together actors from all sectors, something that never happened before. Employers, association, schools, and, uh, and they work together, they, they communicate together. So the, the badge is, is, is a kind of a catalyst for a conversation. At the end, maybe it doesn't matter if there is a badge or if it is in paper or whatever, but already the fact that they, they, they meet, they talk together and they try to create an ecosystem uh, and so there needs to be, uh, an, I don't say an independent body, an independent organization, they need an independent network. We, we try to create networks of recognition, local and regional networks of recognition. The MIVA project is finished. We have another called Reveal, which is a continuation of uh, MIRVA, will kick off uh, next week. Uh, and the idea is to build local recognition networks because what we have seen is if we want the id of open recognition to to take hold we need to have a network uh, it's kind of a yes a chicken and an egg uh, so what we try what we will do in that project is is to transfer some of the practice we have developed in other countries, that would be Italy and, and Greece, uh, because this is exactly what happened uh, with the Netherlands and, uh, and Belgium, where they created Open Recognition Netherlands and Open Recognition Belgium uh, after, after us, because they, they, they saw the, the need to have a specific organization. I don't think an organization about open learning could do that, uh, or an organization it needs to be something specific, which is really focused on, on, on recognition and just recognition. And with this conversation, should it be Open Badge France? But they had even this conversation in Belgium and in Netherlands, should it be Open Badge? And uh, they've been wise enough not to use badges because the badge is just an instrument, but to really address uh, the challenge, which is about recognition. The, the ills of our society a lot of them comes from misrecognition. School dropouts or pushouts, most of the time is because they're misrecognized, they're not being recognized. And how do you address that? 
and and it's a very fundamental human need isn't it to to be recognized and if i look at our society at the moment um well i'm experiencing that particularly in the uk at the moment because i have an elderly mother who has recently had a fall um so i've become her carer as well as you know full-time job and everything else and you realize how little recognition there is for that process of supporting um those who are vulnerable um and because our sort of tendency to recognize through uh through money through financial terms only and to create an, a sort of an economic pyramid and those people who often find themselves at the bottom of that economic pyramid are those who um feel the least recognition Mm -hmm. and actually very often are the most crucial to our society in fact the, the pandemic has has underlined that to us just how crucial yes. uh, a role caring for others mm -hmm. has within society um so it, it actually op offers a way of democratizing some of that rec recognition revisiting um, recognition in terms of giving an opportunity to reevaluate what what we value as a society yeah. and that means not just to recognize the people no. but give them the power well yes recognize the power to recognize <laughs> yes yes because you know, you know I, I, I use this, this uh, story I mean if, if imagine a, uh, uh, a kid school dropout is not recognized okay now if she offers a recognition to someone else and the person accepts that recognition, she's being recognized. So you can take, the, if you are not recognized, you can still be recognized, taking the initiative of being recognized. And I think when, when, when we speak about empowerment and empowerment being putting people into a, a, a movement, the, the idea is, is really to, one of them could be recognized. Maybe the first movement could be you recognize. So, I mean, I kind of know the answer to this question, but only because I'm very much, I've very much been following your work on open recognition. But how can we contribute? How can, how can the open education special interest group, for example, get involved and contribute to the work of open recognition? Uh, uh, I, I think uh, maybe it's too, uh, too general uh, of a response, but uh, to, to recognize the people are not as knowers. Yes. Uh, and building, we, are, we have in France this network called Réseau des Échanges Réciproques de Savoir, uh -huh. Reciprocal Knowledge Exchange Network. So, of course, if you think that open education is like you are the social worker and you have the tool at my open education and I'm here, I'm solve your problems. Uh, uh, not exactly. <laughs> now, if you think that uh, if, if, if you really want to develop open education, it means to be open to people. It means to be open to people and to recognize the people as a source of knowledge. Uh, and not, not just as, as being uh, uh, a client to your intervention yes yes that whole instrumental um challenge opens again doesn't it because yeah people tend to assume that if there is an organization they do the thinking for them and actually we're far better off <laughs> participating and well to to quote a phrase being the change we want to see yes yeah the thing, if people are in a dire situation, they probably know what is the solution to this situation. And, uh, and the solution is not just them, it's, it's systemic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I heard someone uh, today who said, uh, you know, if you, there is this uh, Chinese proverb, uh, teach a person to, to fish, he will, be fed for life, but uh, if you just give him a fish, you have food for a day. I think first we should give him a fish for a day so he, the person could survive. But then what happens if, if the river has no fish because it has been, everything has been taken away by some corporation or been poisoned? What happens if the banks are, are, are not being secured? 
So it's not enough to, to, to teach people how to fish if there is no fish or if uh, fishing is, is, is not secure. So it is a systemic approach we need to, to, to develop and they need to, to, we need to recognize that and uh, to help them make the, the first move so they, they, they can understand that they will be able to have an impact. And if you take the uh, Gilets Jaunes in France, it was really, they were invisible they decided to put a yellow jacket to be visible. So it, is, it was really a problem of recognition. And, and they came up with many interesting ideas, except that the government saw that as a threat and not as an opportunity. Didn't recognize them as, as, as people, but as, 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 a, as a danger. Uh, and I, I, I think this is, this is the problem, one of the problems we, we have is, is not, uh, uh, it's not empowering people. They were moving. Even when they were blocking the roads uh, uh, at a crossroads, they were moving. And yes. we should have cherished that movement uh, of people that, uh, so yeah, this is a different approach to conflict resolution. And, and I think it's wonderful that it's coming out of France, and not solely out of France, because it's certainly, um, it's certainly, got a lot of input around the world uh, uh, from the work that you've done um, but the the tradition of um, taking the work of change and putting it in your own hands and empowering each other um, and being solidaire mm -hmm. and th these are these are traditions that have roots in many cultures and many nationalities but I, i'm really interested in the fact that you, you, what you're pointing us to is the importance of those who are already empowered recognizing that this isn't a challenge this is an opportunity yes and and i i don't think you know as, as we're still in our second lockdown and you're the same in france i know um you know the the time is short agir c'est important mm -hmm. so action action needs to happen yeah as ever, Serge, you have given us a, a, a fabulous um, overview of the work that you've done and it's, and it's really inspiring work. And I'm gonna point everybody uh, through this um, recording to your ORA website and say, take a look, mm -hmm. think about this, think about who and how you recognize the others around you, whatever their role, whatever their status, how how are you going to make a difference today in terms of how you recognize other people who are um, of significance around you because it very much starts with the small act doesn't it it's very much the, the little things and and i love the fact that, that sort of central to your discourse here is the thought of, of open badges as a as a catalyst yeah. as you know just an opportunity to get minds centered and, and thinking about what's missing and what do we not recognize and how can we change that. Mm -hmm. So I really thank you for that. And, and I thank the French nation for their philosoph philosophic thought, which I think um, is particularly important and, and often lacking in the discourse. So thank you so much.